guys. Yeah, the president's son is expected to arrive on Capitol Hill around 10 o'clock this morning, and here is what we can expect from his deposition. Hunter will be under oath when questioned by impeachment inquiry leaders about his father's role in his overseas business deals. The transcript is expected to be re released shortly after the deposition, as requested by his lawyers. He will also be able to testify in a public hearing at a later date. Now, the likelihood of Hunter cooperating remains in question, though, after he was originally due to appear two months ago, but skipped to deliver these public remarks instead. Listen. There's no evidence to support the allegations that my father was financially involved in my business because it did not happen. But House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is calling his bluff. The Biden family, specifically the son and the brother of the president of the United States, were selling access to Joe Biden. Anytime they were pitching themselves to a, a foreign government or foreign oh, sure. national, they would put Joe on the phone. The investigation's about interviewing all these former Biden associates, and they say they were selling access to Joe right. and that Joe was a willing participant. Comer says despite the outcome of today's deposition, Republicans will continue the impeachment inquiry into President Biden and more subpoenas and interviews are yet to come. Hunter Biden, the big natural gas tycoon, I hope you're not too tired from your last art show. I'd hate for you to paint yourself into a corner during this deposition. I heard you got a new job as a magician because you've been making all of your business dealings disappear. I wonder what else he got up his sleeve. I got a laptop. I got a GoPro. I got a Glock cause I say I'll low, low, low. I got a bag of crack and you can probably see. I also got a pee. I got a pee. I got a pee. Why is everyone laughing at me? So if you find a little pee on the floor after I leave, I think it probably belongs to me. <laughs> we have criminal amounts of fun on this show and i say that because we just wait every single day for joe biden to put us in jail for memes like that it'll be for the memes okay when they come out when they come knocking for your boy benny it'll be for the memes also i think my kids i have two kids that are potty training right now so i peed on the floor if you find some pee it's probably me we're probably going to be seeing that song in the Johnson household. Well done, Jerry. Everyone thank Jerry in the comment section. Say thanks, Jerry, because he makes the memes on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, the only show on the internet with a full-time meme maker. It's the Benny Show. Today is Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. Hunter Biden is live in Capitol Hill right now, giving testimony to Congress about the Biden crime family. Nathan Wade's personal attorney... <laughs> gives up the ghost and says oh damn when it comes to the bombshell revelations in his own writing that fanny and nathan's hot dog have been lying to the court oh we are gonna go there today brett tolman former federal prosecutor joins the program to talk about the dumpster fire the uh amount the dumpster the dumpster truck junk in the trunk dumpster fire of Fulton County. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Whoa, baby. We got some polling to show you. We got some important news for you. I mean, crazy. Crazy what we just saw in Michigan last night. Nobody's talking about it. And what does that mean? What does it mean that nobody's talking about the vote that happened in Michigan last night? It is a solid gold vote for Donald Trump. We have numbers for you that are going to well, I'll give you some uplifting. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you are uplifted in your finances in a world where some of the dumbest people on planet Earth are in control, are, uh, shockingly, of the American dollar and your financial future. It's actually terrifying. If you look at Janet Yellen, you look at Joe Biden, invest in gold. Invest a little bit. Just invest a little bit in gold, okay? Like, there's a bunch of crazy crypto coins out there. There's a bunch of people trying to say, like, this and that and this and that, and that's fine. There's fads all over the place. But consider gold, all right? I invest in gold. It's like the greatest thing ever um, because it's just constant. 
My friends at Allegiance Gold can take care of you. Go to protectwithbenny.com today. Call 844-66-BENNY. Right now, get $5,000 in free silver with qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by inflated stock values or the promise of, well, something that may just disappear overnight. It happens all the time. Protectwithbenny.com. The thing that won't disappear is gold. And ladies and gentlemen, check out this polling from last night. Not polling. So, I'm sorry. Check out the literal election results from last night in Michigan. Let's start off because we have like an uplifting show today. We have an uplifting show. We're, we're going to be like, we're, we're going to be red pilling on this show and white pilling on this show. Check it out. From Michigan. Donald Trump, I mean, not only, of course, dominates Nikki Haley uh, by 50 points. Okay, that's a 50 point spread. By a 50 points. And that Nikki Haley got like 20% 20, 20 of the vote. Um, those are all Democrats. We, they, this has now been proven. Those are all Democrats. But that's not the point. Okay, the point is look at how Joe Biden fared against Donald Trump in the vote last night. Donald Trump got 150,000 more votes than Joe Biden in Michigan. But Joe Biden won Michigan, remember? <laughs> they tell you Joe Biden won Michigan. Joe Biden, look at this numbers for Joe Biden. 100,000 people in, in Michigan voted uncommitted. So they went in to vote against Joe Biden and there was no one on the ballot. So they just voted, they hate Joe Biden. 100,000 people showed up to vote, I hate Joe Biden in Michigan. Now look at Donald Trump. Look at that. Donald Trump got 150,000 more votes in the primary than Joe Biden did. Ooh, baby. What does that tell you? Those are going to be tough numbers to overcome. We showed you yesterday the polling that Donald Trump is up by 10 points in Michigan. And that actually plays out in the data right there. That's like actually a perfect correlation. Bam. People are saying Joe Biden's too old. People are saying that Joe Biden um, is obviously an evil Marxist that hates this country, hates his own family. He's going to try and protect his son Hunter today on the Hill. But can he protect even himself? We're going to cover all of the Biden crime family and sort of like re, re up that news cycle. And we're going to do our best. We've been on that news cycle for about three years. But first, ladies and gentlemen, emergency Biden health update. Joe Biden just ran unannounced to the hospital. Joe Biden was just rushed to the hospital. What the hell is going on? Here we go. Biden health update. <laughs> the evil Kamala laugh always gets me. The evil Kamala laugh always gets me. Also, that meme was so good. I want to play that meme again. I want to play the meme again. I just want it to be loaded in Rolls Royce. Please, Rolls Royce, load the meme. The meme is so good. I don't know how you do it, Jerry. Okay, Biden says that he's okay after a unannounced rush to the hospital. So I've worked inside the White House before, not as a White House staffer, but as a journalist, I've been, I've asked questions during the White House press briefing. And what normally happens is you are given, sometimes days in advance, like what the president's gonna do. President doesn't move easily. The president moves with, a, with force, right? And with grandeur everywhere, even Joe Biden, right? Takes like, 500 people for the president to even like move at all, right? And so you know where the president's going at all times. It's like pre-written in a schedule. And especially somebody who moves as slow as Joe Biden, there is never any unannounced things. Today, Joe Biden unannounced ran to the hospital, like just moments ago. Now his kid happens to be testifying at Capitol Hill. Is this Joe Biden trying to trick the news cycle? We're not sure. We'll give you uh, the update, however. Joe Biden left for Walter Reed. That is the military hospital. Here you can see Joe Biden. Uh, he, tr he, he tries to run and then realizes, oh, sh oh, sh that's a bad idea. No, 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 no. That's a bad idea. Not going to run. Not going to run. And so Joe Biden does his robotic wobble, looking like one of those, um, looking like a TI-100 TI or whatever from Terminator. We actually have like really nice side-by-sides of Joe Biden and robots. They walk exactly the same. I think we have one, ladies and gentlemen. So Joe Biden, this is the motorcade. This is Joe Biden arriving at the military hospital where the president typically gets um, gets their physical. And the, apparently this is Joe Biden's physical. Uh, of note, Joe Biden, uh, his team and Joe Biden have all screamed that Joe Biden will not be getting a cognitive exam. Uh, ALX, while I read... I read through this article. Can you please grab that clip from yesterday of Kamala Harris saying Joe Biden's alive and that maybe that's why we should vote for him? Like cackling and saying Joe Biden's alive. 
like as she grits her teeth. Because I think that's relevant here. President Biden revealed Wednesday that he's making an unannounced trip to Walter Reed Medical Center for a physical exam. Biden has undergone yearly physical examinations, but this is strange because they're typically put on the schedule uh, months in advance. Earlier this month, White House Press Secretary Cringe Jean-Pierre stated that Biden's physical from Dr. Kevin O'Connor does not believe, does not, uh, does not have a cognitive test. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She says that O'Connor believes Biden proves his cognitive ability every day when he operates as president. Oh, okay. How many lies? How often can these people lie to you? Does the White House think the idea of president taking a cognitive test is part of the physical is a legitimate idea, reporter asked? I'm not going to say what Dr. O'Connor said to me about a year ago when Biden was released. Cringe Jean Pierre said. Uh, Biden hasn't had great health. Biden had um, Biden went under anesthesia uh, to get cancer removed. Uh, from his intestines, I believe. Joe Biden has had also melanomas removed from his skin, so other cancers. Really great idea, by the way. Joe Biden returning lobster red from all of these, from all of these vacations. So he has all this skin cancer, and then he goes and like gets fried on the beach. Genius idea. But of course, Joe Biden doesn't care about her husband. Joe Biden, if she cared about her husband, would put him in a nursing home where he belongs with a bedpan and a night nurse. But Joe Biden only cares about power. And so Alice Cooper plays on, if you know what I mean. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, how is Joe Biden doing? Well, Kamala Harris answered that question in a recent interview where the interviewer from the corporate press uh, says, hey, um, everyone's scared that Joe Biden is going to croak. Uh, what do you think about that? Kamala Harris's response is not very comforting if you're Joe Biden. Watch. We were talking to some Democratic donors, mm -hmm. and they have told us that should something befall President Biden and he is not able to run, mm -hmm. that there would be a free for all for who would run as president. Because Joe Biden is very much alive and running for re-election. Joe, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden's alive. <laughs> and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> It's Kamala Harris. <laughs> Say you were in a court of law. We're going to get to Big Fanny in just a second. Hunter Biden on the Hill right now. It is closed door testimony. We'll get, bring you all of the footage of Hunter Biden on the Hill that we have. And then we'll have interviews with people who are asking Hunter Biden questions um, very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's say you were in a court of law and you're being accused of some horrible crime, right? Um, and your lawyer after seeing all the evidence, after seeing all the evidence laid before the court, right? Your lawyer, uh, who you pay to defend you, which is kind of like the position of the vice president in a way, um, says, you know what, your honor, my client is alive. And that's good enough. You'd probably fire that lawyer, wouldn't you? <laughs> You'd be like, what the hell's wrong with you, dude? What, what kind of a defense is that? As you just heard from Kamala Harris. Joe Biden doing his very best to, well, I guess put his own health at risk. Um, Joe Biden returning red and sunburnt like a lobster. Again, this is a guy who has, like for the last couple decades, had skin cancers removed. Look at this guy. Holy smokes. That was, like, again, I, I personally believe that this is Joe Biden, like, trying to look like Donald Trump in a way. Like, doing his best attempt to look like Donald Trump. Spent a little too much time in the Danny bed. <laughs> Joe Biden's going to start like dyeing his hair, like bleach blonde and like swooping it over, get the hair, get more hair plugs in. That's not Joe Biden's hair. Joe Biden's been bald as a bat since the 1970s. We have the photos to prove it. Balding, it doesn't reverse. So Joe Biden's been bald as a bat since, so that's not Joe Biden's hair. So whatever plastic has been rooted into his skull that to try and look like synthetic hair, Joe Biden's going to like do the Trump haircut. Again, again, we do have the proof by the way. And we, we, okay, we'll go to Hunter Biden, but we do have the proof that Joe Biden may be a robot. Okay. We've talked about Joe Biden, maybe having lizard skin before. Uh, if, the, if you need any further proof that Joe Biden's a robot, please observe, ladies and gentlemen, don't just go in with no preconditions and don't let the images lie to you. Like just let the images speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're the same picture. Okay. Yeah. Just be open-minded about it. Be open-minded about it. Is this Joe bot? Is it a Joe bot? Is Joe Biden real? I have yet to see confirmation. Somebody hold 
a little piece of glass underneath Joe Biden's nose and mouth. Hold up a mirror, see if it fogs up. If it fogs up, maybe we'll know that Joe Biden is actually with us. We don't know, and not actually a meat puppet. Well, this is good. Okay, since I talked about it, okay, and then we're gonna move on. Since I talked about it, Joe Biden's been bald as a bat since the 1970s. Look at this. This is Joe, this is Joe Biden. <laughs> this is Joe Biden at the signing of the Declaration of Independence when he first became a senator. Um, and Joe Joe Biden uh, showing the 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 key to Ashley Biden's diary there that he found, um, and uh, you know that he immediately used the key to threaten corn pop because he had too much pomade in his hair at the pool. So that's Joe Biden for you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on to the show, to show Biden's dumbass kid. Hunter Biden is on Capitol Hill to testify behind closed doors as part of the impeachment inquiry against his father. You remember that this isn't Congress being like skittish about Hunter Biden. This is uh, Congress doing what they always do in these committees, which is to do closed door testimony first. Don Jr., for instance, famously sat through nine hours of closed door testimony. Um, Don Jr. was also sent white powder yesterday. Babylon B says that Hunter Biden was very jealous that Don Jr. got white powder and not him. Um, Don posted that, so I feel like I'm okay making fun of <laughs> making fun of a, a, a very serious situation. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Biden did walk into Congress today. Last time he did this, he had all sorts of antics. Hunter Biden doing all sorts of uh, bibbidi bop, skibbity doo, whatever you want to call it, crying, weeping running into Congress. I mean, it's like, like, like Marjorie Taylor green, like going into the committee hearing to hold them in contempt. You remember all this crap? Hunter Biden didn't pull any of that S this time. Hunter Biden walking into Congress with his tail between his legs. Let's go. We could be well seeing done. an arrival um, of Hunter Biden here any moment now. Uh, Jim Jordan just went through the main door. Uh, we're staking out, obviously, position. Um, he's expected in the next eight minutes. So um, maybe this is maybe this is him. All right, here he is. All right, Hunter Biden arriving on Capitol Hill. All right, didn't take any questions, answer any questions. Remember, you go back to the moment when Hillary Vaughn was able to stop him in the hallway. Let's listen yeah, here. There's a series of cameras set up, so they're just different relays here, one after the other. And we'll see whether or not there's any commentary that's given. Um, when James Biden testified, I think he went in at a similar time, 10 a.m. I think he was still there after 7 o'clock at night. Uh, so that, that, that's nine hours, not including a lunch break. And uh, here we go, Hunter, picking up the other camera. what do you hope camera. to tell the committee today? Mr. Biden. That might be the last relay. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Gary's still with us. The moment he hired his attorney, who was by his side there, Abby Lowell, mm -hmm. that seemed to get the attention of a lot of people in Washington. All right. There it is. No shenanigans this time from Hunter Biden. You will recall that last time Hunter Biden did this, he went into his own contempt hearing where he was going to be held in contempt of Congress. This is how they're trying to put Steve Bannon in prison for months and Peter Navarro in prison. And it would have been a big boo-boo because, well, I mean, the, the rules are effectively exactly the same. You know, the Trump kids had to testify. The spouses of the Trump kids had to testify. You, you, Congress subpoenas you, you have to go in and testify. Now you can plead the fifth the entire time if you wish, but nonetheless, you, you got to answer a subpoena to Congress, right? They're in the constitution. And so during the contempt hearing, Hunter tried to be a little cute, too cute by half and sat in his own contempt hearing. I guess trying to make the point that, I don't know, he still does drugs. Because it's like the stupidest thing you could possibly do. You're like, you're in Congress. Just go testify, Jack Wagon. Anyway, he's testifying now, currently. We are in communication. You see multiple members of the committee on our show all the time. We're in communication with those members of the committee. They frown on cell phones during those committee hearings, especially the behind closed door ones, right? That's why there's no never any leaks. But what we do have is Hunter Biden's opening statement, which as you can imagine, is incredibly wordy and blathery. Um, but here's the opening statement of Hunter Biden. Uh, we'll read just the first graph here. Uh, I'm here today to provide the committee with one uncontestable fact that should not end 
the false premise. That should end the false premise of this inquiry. I did not involve my father in my business. Not while I was practicing a lawyer, nor in my investments, transactions, domestics, and international as a board member, and not as an artiste. Never. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's a shame, really, because um, if it wasn't such a it wasn't such a bald faced lie, and that is an attack on Joe Biden's hairline, um, it it would be kind of funny because we're gonna knock that lie down right now. We're gonna have a great time doing it. Let's let's go destroy let's go destroy the lie that Joe Biden was never involved in Hunter Biden's businesses because we have so much profound and compounding evidence that that is untrue. Um, and it's important for us to actually tell the truth on this program and to get that information out there. Uh, first, I do want to note that the last time Hunter Biden did this, it was really special. Here, here is, <laughs> here is what's about to happen in that committee hearing room. Okay. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the last time Hunter was in the committee hearing room, started asking him about the sex crimes on his laptop. There are multiple sex crimes that can be found on Hunter Biden's laptop. The entire family is a bunch of perverts and degenerates, real sickos, this Biden family. It's really detestable um, that the most of the American public don't actually physically know this, that the Bidens refuse to acknowledge Hunter Biden's uh, child out of wedlock, uh, the amount of like manipulation and coercing that Hunter Biden did to his female staffers, to like women who work for him, that Hunter Biden defrauded uh, and then manipulated into sexual activities. And then just the open like violations of the Mann Act, like bringing women, bring prostitutes across state lines for sexual favors, things like that. I mean, all of it detestable, uh, d sick, sick and degenerate. And as soon as Hunter Biden was asked questions about that last time he staged a stunt in Congress, like he stormed out of the hearing room. Here's Mar the great Marjorie Taylor Greene um, having Hunter Biden tuck tail and run like the little bitch that he is. Go. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I'd like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Burst their bubble. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> so Hunter Biden went running. Hunter Biden was also asked if he's on crack while he was walking through Congress. Uh, that was one of my more fa that was one of my more favorite clips. Let's see if we can grab that one. Um, but let's start knocking down some of these lies, okay? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. A uh, series of lies from the Biden family that Joe Biden had nothing to do with Hunter Biden's business. Why is this an important lie? Because if Joe Biden is found to be benefiting from his son's business dealings, and is, the evidence is demonstrable that obviously Joe Biden benefited from his son's business dealings, then what you'd have there is you'd have an actual quid pro quo. You'd have Joe Biden actually influencing American policy in order to benefit his dumb kid, okay? And in order to benefit himself. Uh, Joe Biden tragically lost a son, he tragically lost Bo Biden. It's a tragedy and any parent loses any kid. Bo Biden didn't die in war like Joe Biden lies about. Kind of like, what kind of a sicko lies about their kid's death? I don't know. Apparently Joe Biden doesn't even remember his kid's death, but here we are. So Joe Biden has to then like default to Hunter Biden who was always like the messed up kid. Ever since Hunter Biden was 18, Joe Biden's been trying to get Hunter out of jail. When Hunter Biden was 18 years old, Hunter Biden caught a case in New Jersey during a family vacation where he was like buying drugs and buying crack and buying coke, got locked up by the local police and Joe Biden had to muscle in as a senator and start threatening people to get his kid sprung from jail. So Joe, so jailbird Hunter, his entire life, Hunter Biden's always been this like messed up degenerate kid and Joe Biden has felt the compulsion to instead of allow a consequence to happen to Hunter Biden, to always jump in and save his stupid son. So you can argue whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. As a parent myself, I can tell you it's a bad thing. Okay. They're, that's just flat, flat, flat line. You must, your kids must suffer consequences because the world is real and the rule world has gravity. And in the real world, there are real consequences. If you smart off to somebody at a bar, you're going to get punched in the face. That's going to be a real consequence. And it's going to really hurt. It's going to break your nose, break your jaw. It's going to hurt your kid. So they should learn consequences as a young child. 
We're going through this in my own house. Like you have to learn that there are consequences in the world for bad behavior, because eventually your kid will learn that lesson, no matter how hard you try and protect him. Hunter Biden is 55 years old. He is an old man. And he still doesn't know. He's still like this petulant little child being protected by daddy, who's a degenerate himself and obviously riddled with dementia. Check out this interview from Axios. It's a shocking interview where Mike Allen asked Joe Biden, like, hey, dude, like, no matter what, like, this looks really, really bad, what you did with your kid in Ukraine. Go. Hunter Biden, your son, was getting paid a lot of money to serve on the board of a Ukrainian energy company facing serious corruption charges. You were the vice president running point on Ukraine. The average Joe hears that and says, that sounds fishy. What's your understanding of what your son was doing for an extraordinary amount of money? I don't know what he was doing. I know he was on the board. I found out he was on the board after he was on the board. And that was it. And there's nobody. Well, no you've had said, a lot of time. Isn't this something you want to get to the bottom of? No, because I trust my son. But that doesn't pass the smell test. Like, when you're vice president, isn't there a higher standard? Don't you need to know no. what's happening with your family? Don't you need to put down no. some guardrails? Um, um, unless there was something that was, uh, there was something on its face that was wrong. There's nothing on its face that was wrong. So look, if you want to talk about problems, you know, let's talk about Trump's family. I mean, come on, this is. So <laughs> these so, guys are amazing. So you think that everything that happened was kosher? You know, there's not one single bit of evidence, not one little tiny bit, to suggest anything done was wrong. Okay, here's a little bit of evidence for you. Here's the actual literal checks with Joe Biden's name on them. We've done shows on every single one of these, all right? Here's the physical evidence of Joe Biden getting paid from these shady-ass deals. Again and again and again, the committee has presented the evidence that Joe Biden personally, physically benefited. Joe Biden's actions in office. Oh, son of a bitch. We held up all the money. And then the prosecutor got fired. Victor Shokin. Literally, the people who are involved in these scams coming forward saying, no, Joe Biden knew. Here's a guy named Devin Archer who tells Tucker Carlson, yep, Joe Biden knew everything. This is the business partner. Hunter Biden can't be trusted with any of this. He's a complete cokehead, like out of his mind. He had to have a handler. Hunter Biden's handler is like, yeah, dude, we like Joe Biden knew everything. What? The reaction to what you've said in public, to what you said to the committee mm -hmm. on the Hill, um, and doubtless to what you're, you've been telling us in this interview is that like there's no corruption here at all this is totally normal joe biden had no role whatsoever in uh in his son's business or knowledge of it but right how would i mean that seems false yeah i, I think that yeah that, that's that's categorically false i think that what what the he was aware of hunter's business he met with hunter's business partners he i mean you found a letter that that illustrates that he knew me and I he's thanking you. <laughs> he's thanking you for so, his efforts. So I think that was, for, yeah, I think for your it's efforts. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that a, that's a, um, you know, that's that's not factually right. So wait a second. If the business part, like, <laughs> it's great. It's a great saying about the company of thieves, right? If you spend time in the company of thieves, don't uh, be, don't be shocked when you get stolen from, right? Right. So these guys are now all turning on Joe saying, no, 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 and all these guys have already testified, saying Joe Biden knew everything. Turning on Joe and then going to Tucker Carlson, not the first time that's happened, Tony Bobulinski did the exact same thing. Tony Bobulinski testified last week before this very same committee in the same seat Hunter Biden is pissing in right now, watch. I didn't generate that email, James Gilliard generated that email. And in that email, James Gilliard goes through intimate detail of what each individual's requests were from a compensation perspective and how the equity in the enterprise would be divvied up. Very important, May 13th, that email was generated by somebody else to me. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity, Jim Biden's referenced as you know 10%, doesn't say Biden, it says Jim, and then it has 10% for the big guy held by H. I 1,000% sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's, that's crystal clear to me because I lived it. I met with the former vice president in person multiple times, and I had been meeting and talking with Hunter Biden and, and uh, Jim Biden and Rob Walker and James Gillard. 
So here's the text message. I mean, we can show you the evidence all day long. The evidence is, is preponderance of evidence. It's demonstrable. I'm sitting here with my dad. I'm very angry. My dad's going to hold you directly accountable if you don't pay me, dirty Chinese communists. But all these other deals aside, there's one that is particularly egregious that I know that Congress is going to ask about because we've been communicating with members of the committee and we know where they're going to go with this. They're going to talk about Ukraine because everything in Ukraine suddenly starts making sense. The CIA staged a coup in Ukraine in 2014. It wasn't a soft coup. It was a hard coup. Just this week, the New York Times is out with a uh, story about how there were multiple CIA bases operational in Ukraine. For the last decade, the CIA has effectively been running Ukraine as a slave state, as a client state to the State Department and to the super state of America. It is like one of our 50 first or 57th or 60th states here in America. You thought there were 50 states? <laughs> Come on. So Ukraine has always been like a little silly little American asset for some reason, fetishized by our elites. Um, that is suicidal and stupid. And this is why there is so much focus on Ukraine. Now, part of the benefit to doing this was that American elites like Mitt Romney, like the Pelosi's, like the Kerry's, and like the Biden's could use Ukraine as a money pit pot, as a goodie bin, as a cookie jar. Just go stick their little grubby hands in. They can just manipulate. They're, the rules aren't the same there, right? Here in America, you could do a gas deal, but it has to be on the up and up. It has to go through regulations. In Ukraine, you could do a gas deal, put your kid on the board, and get all the money for yourself. And you have all the leverage, right? Because Ukraine is a client state. You could just pull the funding at any time. You could manipulate the entire nation. And so it's a way to get filthy rich. That's exactly what the lease are doing. And it's exactly why they want to fund Ukraine again. Because Zelensky has all the dirt on them. This is why Donald Trump was calling Zelensky and being like, yo, you got to like look into this. I know you have all the evidence of these dirty dealings in Ukraine. Zelensky's straight up blackmailing our elites. Take that to the bank. Mark that down. And it'll come out. As soon as the money stops flowing, it'll come out. The papers will mysteriously be leaked. And you'll be able to see exactly what our American elites have done in Ukraine. And it was just the getting was too good. So Joe Biden has a problem. His kid had just been kicked out of the Navy. We've studied this so much. We know it like the back of our hands. His kid, his kid was supposed to be set up in the Navy. So Bo Biden, again, dies of a brain tumor. He was the attorney general of Delaware. So Joe Biden was being, Bo Biden was being set up to replace his father as a senator and just sort of run a little dynasty there. Bo Biden dies of a brain tumor, not in Iraq, like Joe, like Joe Biden lies about, but dies of a brain tumor. Anyway, Hunter Biden is then next, uh, next in line. So you gotta, you got this guy has this drug record. He's a complete degenerate scumbag. You gotta, you gotta squeaky wash him clean. So you put him in the military, right? This is what the elites do. They put him into some no-show job at the military. Well, Hunter Biden gets drug tested and they find all this crack in his system. Shocker. So he gets kicked out of the Navy. You can't, not even Joe Biden can fix that one. Should have been arrested. Should have been put in prison. But he's able to skate by as ever. Hunter Biden hilariously actually blames the crack on two random black guys in DC. Says he bummed a cigarette off him and it was all, there was all this crack shoved in the cigarette. Got it? Following a long time Biden family tradition of, well, blaming anyone but themselves. So now Joe Biden has a problem. He has to figure out what to do with Hunter. And he realizes that his time as vice president is coming to an end. Joe Biden wouldn't allow him to run for president in 2016 and humiliatingly made him like apologize for even wanting to run for president in the Rose Garden. And Joe Biden knows that the time is ticking. He has got to get some money for his family. He is the only person that like has ever done anything of that, like that, that could ever do it. Like, the only reason why anyone would ever want to do any business with these guys, this low, this load of dopes is because Joe Biden's position. So they better start hustling now and maximizing and capitalizing on that position. And so Joe Biden sees Ukraine and has been put in charge of Ukraine by Barack Obama. And what I believe personally is a scheme to get Joe Biden to not run for president. Okay, you don't run for president, we're gonna anoint Hillary Clinton and you can get China and Ukraine. That's when Joe Biden was given China and Ukraine. And then Joe Biden goes, so how do I make money in Ukraine? 
as the client state of, of the American State Department. I put my kid on the gas board of Burisma, and then I get all those checks, $80,000 a month. Boom, boom, boom. I get equity in the company. I get the future returns. And I do it all through my stupid kid. Doesn't matter. The last name Biden, that's all that mattered. That's how it all works. That's how the operation works. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We even have the graphic that we've created for you to show you how this worked. Now, the problem was that Ukraine company was so corrupt that they actually hired a prosecutor to look into how corrupt the Ukraine company was, it's called Burisma. They were siphoning off all this natural gas and all this wealth. And so Hunter Biden now is under investigation in Ukraine. Joe Biden's got to fix that. So Joe Biden withhold, withholds American aid to Ukraine. Ukraine can't survive without American aid in order to get the prosecutor fired. Lucky for us, that prosecutor has now gone to the press. Victor Shokin straight up on Fox News about a month ago is like, yo, Joe Biden got me fired to protect his kid and his political interests and financial interests in Ukraine. Watch. Earlier. Do you believe that Joe Biden or Hunter Biden got bribes? We, we, we have, we I do not want to deal in unproven facts, but my firm personal conviction is that, yes, this was the case. They were being bribed. The fact that Joe Biden gave away $1 billion in uh, U.S. Uh, money in exchange for my dismissal, my firing, isn't that alone? A case of corruption. So how much more do you need? Joe Biden's business partners are saying it. Hunter Biden's texts are saying it. The checks are saying it. The guy who got fired in Ukraine. I thought we were supposed to trust Ukrainians, right? I thought we, they're the just most noble people on earth, right? That you just we're supposed to implicitly believe them. Okay, so there's Victor Shokin saying, no, Joe Biden got me fired to protect his stupid kid and their interests. How much more evidence do you need? Luckily, we have more evidence. In fact, we have the best evidence. We have evidence that should be played uh, on every show everywhere. This is probably the first time you've ever heard this. And it's shocking because nobody has ever refuted that this audio is authentic. Audio of Joe Biden himself talking to then president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, the Muppet that was installed by our CIA when they staged a coup against a, pro against a, in 2014, there was a democratically elected um, president and administration in Ukraine uh, that was, I, I can you call them pro-Russian? They just were like agnostic. They just wanted every side to get along. Well, we couldn't allow that. So we staged a coup against them. We install this guy named Poroshenko and then that guy becomes a little bitch of Joe Biden. Joe Biden thought that this would go on forever, this deal. That he'd be able to do this, and of course he'd do it with impunity because Hillary Clinton would be president, and she wouldn't. She'd look, look the other way, and his family could just make untold tens of millions all around the world without this U.S. State Department or the FBI or the CIA or anyone ever interfering with them, because Joe Biden did his job. He bowed his head and he cucked out of the presidential race, and then he's being given these plums. Right, go off into the sunset, you old man. Go have dementia alone with the geese behind you in your basement. But Donald Trump ruined it. We all ruined this scam for him. And in his last days as vice president, Joe Biden made a panicked phone call to the president of Ukraine. What a strange thing to be doing. Shouldn't you be writing your memoirs? Shouldn't you be like calling your family or like taking your final photos in the, you know, in, in, in one observatory circle, which is the vice president's house? Shouldn't you be doing like other things? Like, I don't know, calling world leaders, like of like, of like allies, you know, England and Japan and just being like, yeah, hello, hi. Like, it's been fun. But Joe Biden spent the last waning hours of his vice presidency, the last hours, this is this call is days before Donald Trump is sworn in, on a frantic, paranoid phone call to the president of Ukraine saying that Donald Trump can never know what we did here. That we've got to shut down all the banks we did business with. Donald Trump can't be sophisticated enough. We have to do this now so that Donald Trump doesn't learn what we've been doing in your country. Nobody has ever said that this call is inauthentic and not real. This is a real call of really Joe Biden begging the president of Ukraine to shut down the banks that he was doing untold 
massive amounts of illegal and corrupt business dealings and money through leveraging and selling you and me. We're the product selling out the American government, selling out the American taxpayer and his position in government. I mean, it's, it's shocking that the entire country doesn't listen to this once a day. Here's the audio with captions. You can hear it and you decide for yourself if this isn't evidence enough to impeach Joe Biden. A second positive news for you. Yesterday, I met me with the general prosecutor Shokin. Yes. And despite of the fact that we didn't have any corruption charges, we don't have any information about the, he doing something wrong, I especially asked him, no, it was the day before yesterday, I especially asked him to resign. In, uh, as a, his... Uh, position as a state person and despite of the fact that he has a support in the power and as a finish of my meeting with him he promised me to give me the statement on, on resignation and one hour ago he bring me the written uh, statement of his resignation. Great. And this is my second step for keeping my promises. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the best production team in the entire country. I'm not trying to brag. We have it because of you. We are getting a second clip where Joe Biden, that is an important clip, that is Joe Biden having the prosecutor's head brought to him on a platter. The prosecutor is looking at Hunter Biden and their business dealings. That audio is from February of 2016. So this is when Donald Trump was st was running for office when nobody thought that he was going to win. The tone changes unbelievably drastically when Donald Trump does win and becomes the president elect. You can hear Joe Biden in a visible panic calling that same president talking about how they need to shut down all the banks, ladies and gentlemen, and we are efforting that clip right now. It is so important to like remember that these people are not smart. They're dumb. They're so dumb, in fact, that even CNN is able to openly uh, understand how corrupt uh, this family is. Now, I've been calling for Joe Biden's impeachment for a long time. I think like on principle, Joe Biden should be impeached, but like for electoral reality, I hope he doesn't get impeached actually. Like Joe Biden is failing right now and is just collapsing in so many different ways. If CNN is doing reports like this on you, then you have such, you've reached critical mass. You have reached the panic era of your administration because now the bubble has burst. Like it's all come crumbling down. Here's CNN uh, blowing out of the water the lie that Joe Biden told in the interview clip that we played for you a second ago, that he's never met Hunter Biden's business partners, that he never did any business with them. Dude, if CNN is fact-checking you and you're a Democrat president and calling you a liar, how screwed are you? Watch. Despite his denials, a CNN review of the laptop data, as well as other public material, shows that Joe Biden did interact with some of his son's associates while serving as vice president, though it's unclear exactly what was discussed. One example, the Republican site, Miguel Aleman Magnani, a Mexican businessman and son of the former president who Hunter was trying to woo. In 2014, Aleman Magnani and his dad were photographed at the White House with then Vice President Biden. In a later email, Hunter Biden reminds Aleman Magnani of the favors he's done for him. We have been talking about business deals and partnerships for seven years. I have brought every single person you have ever asked me to bring to the effing White House and the vice president's house and the inauguration. Hunter Biden bluntly acknowledged the power of the Biden name in a memoir, writing that the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, which put him on its board, considered my last name gold. I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. Oh, no. So what does he say? 
What does he say? In his own in his own mess is his own writing in black and white in a court of law. Cause this is ladies and gentlemen, what's happening right now in Congress, like what you say in your own hand, what you say on your own phone calls, that's used as evidence against you. So Hunter Biden sitting there talking about how he used his father as access points for all of his business deals, even reported on by CNN, which is like the least you can possibly ask for. Like when he says it, when he literally does it in the middle of the street in broad daylight, like, can you report on it, CNN? Yes, they can. And they did. CNN reporting that the entire point of the Biden business ventures were to pivot off of the family name and to use the family name to enrich themselves and to gain wealth. Watch. He has built his political career on promises of honesty, hard work, and a pledge that a family name means something. I give you my word as a Biden. I give you my word as a Biden. But while Joe Biden swears by his name in politics, his son and two brothers spent years trying to benefit from the Biden name. It's all now the focus of a Republican-led congressional investigation. We want to know what the Biden administration is trying to hide from the American people and why they are not being transparent. Republican Congressman James Comer now chairs the House Oversight Committee and has set his sights on Joe Biden's son, Hunter, a mysterious laptop now in the hands of the FBI and long-held conspiracy theories about President Joe Biden and what he does or doesn't know. We have focused, ladies and gentlemen, a great deal of time, effort, and energy on this program to how the Bidens did their dirty business dealings. We have, in our own way, leveraged our own prosecutorial power into investigating what's going on in Ukraine and how did it all work. Turns out, and this is going to come as a shock to you, that these greasy tracksuit-wearing oligarchs from Eastern Europe are exactly what you think they are. Uh, extremely monopolistic in their practices, evil, and willing to do power with other oligarchs around the world. And the Bidens were one of them. A man named Viktor Kolomoisky is tough. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, these names are tough. We're going to do our best to just, like, narrow it down. Okay? So this is the guy who, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Igor Kolomoisky. Igor Kolomoisky is a man who was immediately sanctioned as soon as Joe Biden got into office, meaning you can't travel to America, you can't testify. Why would you sanction Igor Kolomoisky? Well, this is the owner of Burisma. This is the guy who owned the actual gas company. And he also owned the biggest bank in Ukraine. Privat Bank is the name of that bank. What's the connection, Benny? Okay, here we go. The payments to the Bidens would have gone through the banking system of Ukraine. The records of all those payments would be held inside of Privat Bank. That's way too much evidence to have against the Bidens. It would have literally been all the wires and all the transfers and everything. Those transfers left that bank and then went through third party, went to Malta actually, where all the money laundering happens on earth, the, these little like black box states. So Privat Bank is where all the evidence was of the Biden's crimes and the enormous amount of cash that they made. The Biden's made, I think, personally, I think the Biden's made tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars fleecing the Ukrainian people. The evidence is there. Zelensky has it. And that is why they have to keep paying this guy. I, that is my personal held belief. But as soon as the check stop, Zelensky leaks all the evidence of the crimes of the American oligarchs in Ukraine. But you don't need to jump to assumptions or to have wild speculation. You just need to listen to Joe Biden's voice. So I played you the clip from February when Joe Biden knew his time was winding down as vice president, no matter what, even if Hillary Clinton won. But now listen to Joe Biden on November 16th, talk to the Ukrainian president. I don't know why no one's ever played you this clip. Here is the clip. Joe Biden speaking to the president of Ukraine. Poroshenko saying you must shut down the bank that has all the evidence of my crimes. Why would Joe Biden, with literally days left in the vice presidency, not be taking photos or doing interviews with Time Magazine or whatever, Vogue or getting a stupid photo shoot 
Jill Biden wearing whatever shower curtain she's going to wear that day, but with her bedazzler. Alice Cooper going on tour. Why wouldn't Joe Biden be like doing gift baskets for people and signing stuff and like, again, calling the leaders of Germany and Japan and Australia? Why is he on the phone with Ukraine shaking, screaming and barking orders? Saying Trump can't get sophisticated enough to know what we've done here. You'll hear Joe Biden say it. I'm probably the first, this is probably the first time you've ever heard this. This audio was intercepted and then leaked. Nobody's quite sure where it comes from, but nobody's ever doubted its authenticity. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Biden with the actual smoking gun. A phone call between him and Poroshenko after he learned that Donald Trump is going to be the next president and Hillary Clinton wouldn't just be like ushering in the deep state to look the other way. Wow. This is what happens when the protection racket collapsed around Joe Biden. Listen. Let me ask you one thing before I forget. Pravat Bank. Um, uh, I understand uh, the uh, the uh, the governor of the bank is uh, is tentative about setting a date certain for the transition to take place. And I'm being told secondhand that I don't know if this is her position for sure that she is unsure of a date until she gets an agreement from you. I told here's what I've told them. I've told them to get back to her and set a date, and I would talk to you about the date um, because this is getting very, very close. What I don't want to have happen, I don't want Trump to get in a position where he thinks he's about to buy onto a policy where the financial system is going to collapse and he's going to be looked to to pour more money into Ukraine. That's how he'll think about it before he gets sophisticated enough to know the detail. So anything you can do to push the, the, the Pravat Bank uh, um, to closure so that the IMF loan comes forward, I would respectfully suggest is critically important to your economic as well as physical security. I know it's difficult. I know Kolomorsky is a pain in the ass and a problem for everybody, but um, but it really is critical that uh, that 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 we you guys figure this one out. And you've been good. You've you've publicly spoken out as I've asked you to do. You've done that. Why has nobody ever played you that clip? Why does it fall to us? That clip's an authentic clip. It's actually Joe Biden. Isn't it sad how much he's deteriorated listening to him from about a decade ago, 2016? So eight years ago, to like to listen, like Joe Biden doesn't even sound like that anymore. Joe Biden's brain has collapsed. He has no more prefrontal cortex. It's as soft as the soft serve. He's shoving down his gullet. You know, they do that so that Joe Biden doesn't have to answer questions, right? Like if you're if you're licking an ice cream cone, like you don't, you can just mumble. And you can just say he was eating. So Joe Biden doesn't actually have to talk. Isn't that amazing? The deterioration of the man. But more importantly, did you hear what he's saying? We've got to shut down the bank because Trump will get sophisticated and we'll find out what we're doing here. What, what, how much more evidence do you need? How much more evidence do you need? So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Biden racket in a, in a, in a gift wrap for you. In a gift wrap. Final thing, final thing, since we're going to be obsessed with Joe Biden's voice here, we have all these recordings from Hunter Biden's laptop, but here's the one I'm going to play for you. If you're talking to your kid and if your kid's in trouble and if there's a story coming out about what a degenerate criminal your child is, and you have foreknowledge of that story, and you're able to call them and tell them that, (laughs) well, luckily they didn't get us this time. You're probably gonna use the term, hey kid, you're in the clear, which is exactly what Joe Biden says when talking to Hunter Biden on this voicemail before the New York Times ran a massive expose about how the Bidens made corrupt millions in communist China. Here's Hunter Biden, breathless, correction. Here's Joe Biden, breathless, calling Hunter Biden, being like, okay, I got advanced knowledge of the article that's about to be written about us. And um, I think we're in the clear. 
if you're innocent, is that what an innocent person says? We'll get to Big Fanny Willis in just a second, but is this how innocent people act? This is gonna be a theme. Do innocent people profusely sweat and like are unable to answer questions or say you're in the clear to each other in hushed tones? Frantically calling world leaders saying, shut down these banks, fire this prosecutor. No, that's not how innocent people act. Amazing how we're the only, we're the only show that actually sees this, but here it is, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't, doesn't lie. Joe Biden's own voice. Don't lie. Go. Hey, Palestine. It's 8 15. Um, on uh, Wednesday night, if you get a chance, give me a call. Not, nothing urgent. Just want to talk to you. I thought the article, at least the thing on online, that's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times, was good. I think it's clear. And uh, anyway, um, if you get a chance, give me a call. I love you. It's really depressing. A call that, of course, Hunter Joe Biden's own grandchild has never gotten. Navy Joan Roberts in Arkansas never gotten a call like that from her biological grandfather. But Joe Biden frantically making calls when he can to tell his kids that they're in the clear because the New York Times has covered for them and their crimes. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we are reaching a moment right now in American history where truth is at a premium. And we are able to actually break the trillion dollar matrix that is set up around us to stop us from learning the truth. That's why I can play you Joe Biden's voicemails and why I can play you Joe Biden's phone calls with world leaders that they never wanted you to hear. That's why we can show you this data and the data and the receipts and you can see it. Now there's a protection mechanism around families like the Bidens that, that is airtight, at least very, very much tries to be sophisticated and airtight. Okay. And even that's collapsing. So imagine how much easier it is to collapse, um, some of the dumber, lower level muscle criminals of the Democrat party. Of course, I'm talking about Fulton County. And of course, I'm going to move down to Big Fanny land, where Big Fanny and Nathan's hot dog roller, Nathan Wade, had a very special day yesterday, where the attorney for Nathan Wade, a guy named Terrence Bradley, they're not sending their best, you'll see in just a moment, uh, stumbled, bumbled, mumbled, sweated profusely, wiped the sweat from his face using a what looked like a towel from a locker room said i do not recall multiple times especially to the questioning of whether he lies do you lie i don't recall he said <laughs> but it gets even better donald trump's attorney yesterday um did what i think is like legally called like public humiliation to this guy there's a very specific text message in a chain of evidence that the Trump attorneys have that say, um, listen, this, this affair started well before the Trump prosecution. They have this guy in his own words. When presented with this evidence, the man in the hot seat literally goes under his breath, oh, damn. Oh, damn. Incredible moment when Nathan Wade's divorce lawyer appears to mutter, oh, dang, when he's shown text message that he sent saying his client started dating Fannie Willis before they hired him to prosecute Trump. Oh, baby. Oh, man. We have the actual text here. Here's the image of the text. We put this together. Our team put this together. Here's the actual, here's the image, because it's important to actually put up physical, the, the physical evidence. Um, they're talking about Nathan Wade and Big Fanny. Uh, and Miss Merchant says, just date, don't hire him, right? Do you think it started before she hired him? Absolutely, says Nathan Wade's lawyer. So they have him dead to rights. Here is the conversation about this text, the piece of bombshell evidence where Nathan Wade's own attorney admits, yeah, they've been lying to the court the whole time. <sighs> oh, we are cooking. Go. Okay. In Defense Exhibit 26, which I showed you last time, was two pages of text messages between you and Ms. Merchant, correct? Correct. All right. Now, the first page starts off by saying, Ms. Merchant, like, just date, 
don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? You see that? Yes, I see it. Yes. And your response to that was absolutely correct. I'm going to object, ask and answer in cumulative. All right. So uh, after the word absolutely, you on your own said it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. They met at the municipal court CLE conference. That's what you said, correct? That is correct. Oh, man. All right, babies. Okay. Joining us now whew, is the perfect guest to talk about all of this. Former U.S. attorney for the District of Utah, executive director of the Right on Crime, and one of the sharpest tacks there is to break down what happened yesterday in the Fannie Willis trial, Brett Tolman joins the program. <laughs> Brett, I apologize for jumping in here late. There's so much breaking news today. It's just wild. And I just cannot believe yesterday when we had to cut again to Fulton County to be like, what a nightmare. What a dumpster fire on display. So you've tried a bunch of cases. You brought a bunch of evidence. Like, do you regularly have these, like the person that you're prosecuting, like admit in text message form that they've lied to the court? You know, uh, Benny, thanks for having me on. This is surreal watching all this. <clears throat> you know, there's a handful of moments in a trial lawyer's time in the courtroom where you walk away and you go, that was awesome. <laughs> 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 and I can promise you that <laughs> that is what happened <laughs> after that. I mean, for the witness to crumble like that, to be confronted with his own text, for you to be able to slowly walk them through to sort of the, the pivotal admission, and then for it to undermine what has happened. But make, make no mistakes, this the, the the repercussions should be severe for this because mm. you have a county attorney who is an elected official that's willing to compromise all kinds of ethical rules, but now criminal statutes as well. She's, uh, you know, perjury is, comes, comes into play. Uh, potential uh, embezzlement or misuse of government funds comes into play. You also have, you know, the fact that you've got the lawyer from her, her boyfriend serving on the taint team and not a lot of people are talking about the significance mm. of that, but you are supposed to establish a team of lawyers to review evidence that comes in from Trump's lawyers to, to determine whether or not privilege applies and whether it can be used in the case against Donald Trump. Well, guess what? They had a ringer on what is supposed to be the most objective um, above criticism group of people to review the evidence to apply whether or not the privilege uh, uh, establishes. And what do they have? They have a compromised individual on that. So they were not only cooking the books, they were not only doing having an inappropriate affair, but they were also setting up a pathway where they could utilize and make sure they could use all the evidence they wanted to use instead of it following the rules of evidence. So there's so many layers of this, Benny, that, uh, you know, it, it's hard to get your mind around. So yesterday, Andrew McCarthy on Fox said what they're going to go for here is the disqualification of the entire office. Do you agree with that? I do. And there's precedent for it. When you have the elected official compromised, the whole office can be uh, in, in essence, recused from bringing the case. Under those circumstances, the state has two options. Either the attorney general can reassign it to a different county or the attorney general's office can take the case themselves. Either way, they have to review it brand new. And do you think they want to touch? Do you think any other county attorney wants to touch this heaping mess of garbage that has been piled and cobbled together by lawyers who don't care about the <laughs> ethics and the rules of evidence? <laughs> So, so uh, I mean, I, I again, I am kind of shocked. I'm, I'm, I recall a line that Donald Trump said, not about this case, but he said they're not sending their best. And as I watch these lawyers testify, Nathan Wade sitting there, have you ever been to a cabin? And we counted, we put a timer on screen, 60 straight seconds of him sweating, staring at the, the middle distance saying, mm, I don't know. 
Have I been to a cabin? Like, I would never, I wouldn't want these people representing me for a traffic ticket or, or like a parking ticket, much less going after the president of the United States in what, what will be one of the, what will be written down in the history books, right? Uh, of well, the case. Well, Benny, we uh, absolutely true. We may not be dealing with the brightest bulbs here, but let me tell you another factor. Prosecutors are the absolute worst witnesses in a case. Mm. They have always been on the side of power. They are mm. not the vulnerable. They are not the one being asked to, to account. They are not the ones that are in the hot seat. And when they get there, it is, you know, by far the best cross-examination I've ever enjoyed was the one time I got to cross-examine a prosecutor on the stand. <laughs> and then let me tell you, that's that's the stuff that journal entries are made of. Now, I, 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 I honestly, I want to take a step back here and just say from, from with your extensive deep reservoir of decades of doing this and your experience. What have you seen in this trial so far? And can you handicap for us what you think uh, the judge is going to do here? Yeah, great question, Benny. I, I would say <clears throat> if we were in an area where the rule of law is 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 adhered to and you have a an attorney general or a county attorney that's observing this, you would see immediately a grand jury impaneled in order to deal with prosecutors that are willing to go into court and lie. You would also have immediate referrals for ethics violations. And those, those are sub severe when it comes to this kind of behavior. Qualified immunity does not apply when you are lying on the stand or you're committing crimes. And so that, that should be a two two part investigative path that is immediately launched both the criminal side of what they're doing i'd want to know everything about the finances it appears that they were taking advantage of monies that she could funnel to a boyfriend that they could both take advantage of and, and all of those should be pursued the judge reviewing the case has got to be thinking to himself what we have here is not just ethical violations but we might have substantial effort to push a case to benefit personally, financially, and politically against a political adversary. And I, I would I would tell you, Benny, that all of this is bad. And it's it, it's it's a you know something that we watch and we see happening. And you know, lawyers and I we 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 text message and say, can you believe the circus that we're seeing? But let me point out the real controversy here is don't forget, she spent significant time talking to the White House before she brought this case. Mm. I want to know how far does it extend? How far does the effort extend? And I would not be surprised if we're seeing the Biden regime pushing down this effort in the multiple districts that are going after Trump. It does seem uh, unbelievably unhinged, very sloppy and probably very scary for the people involved here because they bit off far more than they can chew. Uh, perhaps pers perfectly personified by the clip that's on screen right now of Fannie Willis holding up reams of papers and screaming at the court before the judge put her in timeout. I've never seen anything like it. Maybe you have, again, in your decades of experience. Can you talk me through like this clip alone? Yeah, I, I saw this clip and watched it a couple of times and you have a choice when you're when you're righteously indignant you have a choice when you're on the stand to try to control the conversation try to you know assert dominance and it always backfires always and it it does in this instance she does not want to be questioned because she's already believed in her own mind that she's above mm. um, accountability so when you believe when when you're on the left right now they believe they are above accountability. The law doesn't apply to them. The rules don't apply to them because the means justify the ends. And that's a scary place for our country because if one side is the only side willing to say, okay, the law still is important and the rules apply, and the other side says no, it's very difficult to play against that team. And so we do need more moments like this. We need individuals that are willing to abuse power to be sitting there under oath you know, with a cross examination that is well prepared and and is pointed at exposing, because that may be the only way that you expose. You know, transparency is almost unheard of in the criminal justice system for those who wield power. Mm. So, uh, final question here, Brett, and I deeply appreciate your your time and your expertise. Um, you said in panel and grand jury, go through all of the potential criminality here. Um, 
if they are found to be sort of where this trial is heading, we have a clip we play often from MSNBC with the legal experts on MSNBC admitting they're going to get disqualified. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you think that this, this could reach like disbarment, that, that this could reach a moment where they get captured and trapped in their own uh, criminal uh, trial? Benny, I do. I mean, this is outrageous. If we back away from it, you know, with all their explanations and all they're trying to say, you know, everything was above board. We know they're lying about when they were dating. We know they're lying about use of funds. We also know that there are compromises to very sacrosanct entities like the taint team that have to review whether evidence is sufficient to come into to a trial against Trump. I mean, at every level and stage, it's not just sloppiness. This is this is bad ethical moral compasses that don't believe the rules apply to them and that they will do anything they can to actually achieve their goal, which was to 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 hobble you know, the leading candidate on the, uh, of their political opposition. And, and that's what they're doing. And so get, this case is going to be, I think the, the, the least consequence is this case, this, this Fannie Willis and her department being disqualified and, wow. and an ethics investigation. That's the least likely consequence if we have well-meaning, thoughtful people that are going to be reviewing it. What's the most likely consequence, quickly? So, uh, you know, the most that's likely... The that's the least of most likely should be. And I think it will be. I think people will see this in another county or the attorney general may see this and say, I'm going to open a criminal investigation on the wow. use of those funds. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe Fannie Willis can buy a dress that doesn't have to be worn backwards. Uh, you know, <laughs> if she if she's able to be allowed to be embezzle, embezzle more, you know, you could, you, you, you know, maybe we'll do a collection. Uh, I'll tell you churches. one thing, she does not want to be on the stand again. I'll, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, Brett, can you please uh, just really quickly shout out what uh, your awesome group, Right on Crime? Absolutely, rightoncrime.com. We are an organization trying to fix broken parts of the criminal justice system, hold people accountable, and, and shed transparent light on what those with power do. So look us up. Love to, love to you know, continue this great work across the whole country. Ooh, couldn't couldn't imagine a better news cycle for you, sir. And we thank you for joining our program. Thank you, Benny. Godspeed. Oh man, what a uh, what a world, ladies and gentlemen. What a special what a special special um, news cycle for us. There's so much going on. Our cup runneth over, and I. I have a very tight little group of, of people that I consider my friends. Um, I do want to go back to the Fulton trial here and state, state this, like for the record. Um, if anybody ever asks you on national TV with what would have to be millions of people watching uh, across the internet and across um, t you know terrestrial television, if anybody asks you, do you lie to your friends? Are you a liar? Do you go to your friends and lie to them? And you go, and your answer is, uh, no comment. You're going to look bad. It's not going to be a good look for you. You will look like a jack wagon. And that is exactly what happened yesterday with Nathan Wade's best friend and lawyer. And what I actually didn't know, a guy who's actually working on the Trump case, Terrence Bradley, uh, in a line of questioning from Trump's attorney. So good. Do you lie? Watch. Normal course of your relationships with your friends, do you pass on lies about your friends? Have I passed on a lie about a friend? Is that what you're asking? Is that something you normally do, Mr. Bradley? Do you tell lies about your friends? I Have I told lies about friends? I, I could have. I don't know. Do you tell lies about your friends about a case of national importance? Objection, that's to... All right, overruled. I could have, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, do you ever lie? <laughs> Hi, um, uh, dear viewer, dear friend, dear friend of mine. Um, let me give you a little bit of friendly advice. If you're watching the program right now, if you're uh, part of the Benny Brigade, if you're part of the Salty Army, um, let me give you some advice right now. If you're married, if you have a husband or a wife, 
if you're even in a relationship, you're dating someone right now, right? Boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, and they ask, do you lie to me? Are you lying if that your significant other asks that, right? Um, for in my case, my wife goes, are you lying to me? And my answer, this is my, and this is my answer. Uh, honey, I don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, I mean, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, can we, can we just watch, can we just watch some Seinfeld? <laughs> yes, it's not going to be a great night for you. Okay. If you sweat profusely and you can't answer the damn question. Do you lie? Are you a liar? Um, and you shrug it off. You're going to have a bad night, pal. You're going to be sleeping on the porch. You're going to be lucky if you're sleeping at all anywhere near that house. Okay. Let me, let me, let me just speak wisdom to you, dear friend. So you better be, you better be coming correct, right? If you're answering big questions like this, unfortunately, Mr. Terrence Bradley, Remember, Fanny Willis, just the, the premier prosecutor in the country, hiring guys like this, hiring guys like Nathan's Hot Dog. They're just, just the smartest people they, the smartest people in the country. Um, can't answer just the basic questions about the case. Can't answer. So maybe you can tell the court in your own words, why in the heck would you speculate in this text message and say that it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton. Why would you speculate and say that in a text? I knew they had met um, at the municipal court um, conference. Um, How do you know that? I'll stop you right there. How did you know that? I answered that the last at the last. Uh, I, I'm I asking knew that. you now. I knew that sir, because I'm asking when you now. I'm asking you questions, and you are in a situation where you get to give answers. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, how did you know that? How did I know somebody when they told, met? Somebody told you that, right? When they met? Yeah. Yes, correct. Who told you? Mr. Wade told me when they met. So you had more than one conversation about the relationship between Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis, because he told you where he met her. That's correct. correct. Incorrect. It's incorrect. It's incorrect. Okay. Oh, man. Dude, okay. Again, body language really doesn't lie. In fact, when you're lying, there are certain things that happen in your sympathetic nervous system uh, and your uh, autonomic nervous system. Is that the right Is that the right way to say that? Where, like, you can't even control it, right? You start prof profusely sweating when you start shaking, right? These are, these are things that are reflexes that happen. Because you're under pressure, you're handling stress. Everyone handles stress kind of as in a similar way, and they have a similar pattern. And so when you see that man slumping over in his desk, like looking like this, and like being literally physically beaten down and being unable to answer the questions and like sweating perfume, you know he's lying. You know it's it's over. It's over. So we have the text. Let's pop it up. We have the text of him going, oh dang. He goes, oh, dang, when he saw this text. <laughs> so she hired Nathan Wade while she was dating him. And here's Nathan Wade's best friend and lawyer confirming that. What did they do after she hired him? Did they have sex in their offices? That's something that was brought up during the conversation yesterday. And um, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, it wasn't pretty, if you know what I mean. Watch. Did you learn from Mr. Wade? I was clarified that's where you learned it from about Mr. Willis, Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis meeting at the Evans office together. I can't recall what the conversation was. Um, I do I do recall um, Knowing that they would, that he would go down to the office or had been down to the office, but I can't tell you in what capacity or when or any of that. No. 
Mr. Wade told you that they had sex at the office, though, correct? I don't recall him saying that, no. You don't recall it? No. So it's possible he did say that? You just don't remember one way or another? I do not remember him saying that. So Nathan Wade said they had sex at the office. Lawyers can't just make up comments like that. They have that in testimony. So the Trump team's like actually holding back a little bit. They have that in testimony. That they were literally banging at the office. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Baby, it's getting bad. It's getting nasty out here. Andrew McCarthy, one of um, our favorite political comment, legal commentators on Fox News, a guy who's not a big MAGA fan, right? A guy who's like not some type of like dyed in the wool, red hat wearing like Trump guy. I, I only preface that to say like he's he's not Andrew McCarthy isn't rooting for a result here. Andrew McCarthy is looking directly at what's happening on TV saying uh, they're done like it's finished. They're, they, they, they'll be lucky if they escape without themselves being in shackles here. Watch. And, you know, with with regard to that, this judge is going to have to make a decision in this case about whether or not he's going to remove Willis and Wade. There's another hearing, I believe, on Friday in this matter. What do you take us through how you think this is going to go at this point? Well, I think the uh, he'll have to sort of segment it so it looks to me like the strongest case to have somebody get out of the case is Wade, because you have all kinds of problems mm-hmm. with uh, with some of his prior statements. Then you have Willis and then you have the entire office. I mean, the ultimate argument they're making is that the whole D.A.'s office has to be removed from this case. Frankly, I think at mm-hmm. this point, if your standard, as it should be, mm-hmm. is the appearance of impropriety, at the very least, Willis and Wade should be off this case and then they should be able to establish whether she and he are so immersed in this that the whole office has to go so anna mccarthy there saying not not a big time trump fan that dude saying the whole office is gonna have to go like they're really they're like that's where we're heading here that they're going to kick out the entire office jonathan turley our favorite uh legal commentator on Fox, this side of Brett Tolman, who's awesome, who Brett Tolman just said the exact same thing. They'll be lucky if they don't catch criminal charges. They'll be lucky if they're the ones without the mugshot after this. It's your boy. There's the boy. Thank you, Fanny, for this mugshot. More to come on that. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Jonathan Turley last night, because it's important to listen to the experts. I'm not a lawyer, right? I don't fancy myself a legal expert. It's important to listen to the experts. Brett Tolman saying they're going to catch a case. They're going to, these guys may go to prison for this. And McCarthy saying their entire office is going to get disqualified. The case is toast. And Jonathan Turley saying, why haven't they removed themselves from the case? They're destroying themselves. And in any other in any other profession, any other legal mind would have said, I'm already off the case. I resign. Turley, go. Wow. I mean, it was a painful testimony to watch. It came off as sort of a Sergeant Schultz defense that I know nothing, nothing, including stuff that I knew with clarity just recently. And it did not go over well. Is that case over in your view? Well, I can't imagine why these two prosecutors have not removed themselves, because I think this judge is in a tough position to keep both of them. There's a chance that they both could be disqualified. Uh, They have not helped themselves, and they certainly have not helped the people of that state. So why haven't they disqualified themselves? Jonathan Turley asks. They're humiliating themselves. This has become like an ongoing running joke. There have been wonderful memes that have been made, in fact, of what Big Fanny and Nathan Wade were up to in their special little cabin. You'll recall that there's a there's a moment when Nathan Wade, Nathan's hot dog, we call him, has been was asked, hey, have you ever been to a cabin with the Big Fanny? And he goes, uh, and then stares up into the sky. Our show always endeavors to bring you legal experts, to bring you the people who are really like truly in the arena, who are like actually there, who can like pr- profoundly like uh, demonstrate uh, knowledge, fact, fa- factual knowledge about these kind of issues. But ladies and gentlemen, we happen to have the evidence of what Nathan Wade was actually thinking about in that moment when asked about the cabin. 
I'm going to ask about the Kavan question. We happen to, with our own, with our own powers of investigation uh, and mean maybe mean making, have uh, been able to recreate that moment uh, and show you. Now that we know that they were having sex in Fanny's office, um, we're able to are able to show you what was happening uh, at that point in time. Um, this is just a service that we provide uh, to the American people. Here we go. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. All the time we've been together, thought our thing would last forever. Through thick and thin, good or bad, all I was happy, never, never sad. Now it's all gone sober, getting worse by the hour. Let's break up the... No. You've never gone to a cabin with this? No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, our cup runneth over. Our cup runneth over. We have breaking news. Mitch McConnell is resigning. I kid you not. Breaking news. Mitch McConnell is resigning right now. This broke seconds ago. Mitch McConnell will be stepping down as Republican Senate leader in November. So as soon as soon as this is breaking this very second, we cannot believe it. Our cup runneth over. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking Mitch McConnell, the longest serving Senate leader in history, will step down from his position in November. Mitch McConnell, done. Is Mitch McConnell going to leave the Senate? Let's read. McConnell, who turned 82 last week, is set to announce his decision on Wednesday in the well of the Senate. Mitch McConnell will step down as Republican leader. He is facing dramatic convulsions in the Republican Party for the last two decades against his leadership. Mitch McConnell is about to resign his position as the Republican leader in the Senate. I believe that what this means is he's going to stay around as a shadow leader inside of the Senate. Um... Mitch McConnell, we hate on this program. Mitch McConnell, just yesterday, there was um, reporting that Mitch McConnell was at the White House encouraging Mike Johnson, who's the leader of the House, uh, to sign off on the Ukraine aid package because Ukraine is the most important thing that we have right now in the country. It's like the most important thing happening in the country. This reporting from Jake Sherman, uh, particularly mean, evil, awful, sick man. Mitch McConnell is not a Republican. Mitch McConnell is the commander of the Uniparty in Washington, D.C. Mitch McConnell is now officially done. Thank God. What a special thing to announce live on the show. Mitch McConnell has been a um, in total and complete collapse. It is important for us to call it out on both sides. I don't consider Mitch McConnell a friend, like a Republican, so it's not really my side anyway. Um, Mitch McConnell is a corrupt, uh, wicked person who's made untold tens of millions in communist China, um, selling out America and American interests. He is as bad as Joe Biden. He often hugs Joe Biden in public. Mitch McConnell is effectively just the exact same person as Joe Biden. True enlightenment in politics is when you realize that Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden are the same person, have the same policies, and actually have the same, well, brain capacity. Here's Mitch McConnell um, from, is this live? Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's cut to Mitch McConnell live now, talking about his resignation. Well, I just have to, if anybody remembered my name, President Reagan called me Mitch O'Donnell. Sure. Enough, I thought my life, my wife Elaine and I got married on President Reagan's birthday, February sixth. Oh, it's probably not the most romantic thing to admit. But Reagan meant a lot. To both this is live people. right now. For 31 years, Elaine has been the love of my life. And I'm eternally grateful to have her by my side. I think back to my first days in the Senate with deep appreciation 
for the time that helped shape my view of the world. I'm unconflicted about the good within our country and the irreplaceable role we play as the leader of the free world. It's why I worked so hard to get the national security package passed earlier this month. Believe me, I know the politics within my party at this particular moment in time. I have many faults. Misunderstanding politics is not one of them. That said, I believe more strongly than ever that America's global leadership is essential to preserving the shining city on a hill that Ronald Reagan discussed. As long as I'm drawing breath on this earth, I will defend American exceptionalism. So as I've been thinking about when I would deliver some news to the Senate, I always imagined a moment when I had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. A moment when I'm certain I have helped preserve the ideals I so strongly believe. That day arrived today. My goals when I was narrowly elected to the Senate back in 1984 were fairly modest. Do a good job for the people of Kentucky and convince them that by doing so, they might rehire me for a second term. That was it. That was the plan. If you would have told me 40 years later that I would stand before you as the longest serving Senate leader in American history, Frankly, I would have thought you'd lost your mind. I have the honor of representing Kentucky in the Senate longer than anyone else in our state's history. I just never could have imagined, never could have imagined that happening when I arrived here in 1984 at 42. I'm filled with heartfelt gratitude and humility for the opportunity. But now it's 2024, I'm now 82. As Ecclesiastes tells us, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To serve Kentucky in the Senate has been the honor of my life. To lead my Republican colleagues has been the highest privilege. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. So I stand before you today, Mr. President, and my colleagues to say this will be my last term as Republican last term. leader of the Senate. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November and they take the helm next January. I'll finish the job the people of Kentucky hired me to do as well, albeit from a different seat. And I'm actually looking forward to that. So are we. So it's time for me to think about another season. I love the Senate, it's been my life. There may be more distinguished members of this body throughout our history, but I doubt there were any with any more admiration for the Senate. After all this time, I still got a thrill walking into the Capitol and especially on this venerable floor, knowing that we, each of us, have the honor to represent our states and do the important work of our country. But Father Time remains undefeated. I'm no longer the young man sitting in the back hoping colleagues would remember my name. It's time for the next generation 
of leadership. As Henry Clay said in this very body in 1850, the Constitution of the United States was not made merely for the generation that then existed, but for posterity, unlimited, undefined, endless, perpetual posterity. So time rolls on. There'll be a new custodian of this great institution next year. Won't surprise you to know I intend to turn this job over to a Republican majority leader. I have full confidence in my conference to choose my replacement and lead our country forward. There'll be other times to reminisce. I'm immensely proud of the accomplishments I've played some role in obtaining for the American people. Today is not the day to discuss all of that because as I said earlier, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. There are many challenges we must meet to deliver for the American people and each will have my full effort and attention. I still have enough gas in my tank to thoroughly disappoint my critics. Ukrainian gas. And I intend to do so with all the enthusiasm with which they become accustomed. <laughs> so to my colleagues, thank you for entrusting me with our success. It's been an honor to work with each of you. There'll be plenty of time to express my gratitude in greater detail as I sprint towards the finish line, which is now in sight. I yield the floor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ding dong. <laughs> ding dong, Mitch is gone. The old Mitch is gone. And is uh, presumably going to try and get uh, Rhino Cuck John Thune um in his place there you can see chuck schumer coming down and thanking him for a job well done uh eroding um the role of republicans in the senate to actually do something to stop joe biden we have literal video and footage of mitch mcconnell hugging joe biden i mean like hugs joe biden here is a uh again what you just watched is a live shot of the senate here's a tweet from yesterday uh from jake sherman who's a reporter in Washington, who has really good sources, uh, saying that McConnell at the White House yesterday in a room with Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer was the one beating up, beating up Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson, of course, the leader of a very thin Republican majority in the House. Mike Johnson yesterday got effectively arm twisted and punched in the corner by McConnell, saying that McConnell said, um, Ukraine, Ukraine is the only thing that Congress should be caring about right now. Johnson talked about the border, but McConnell told him to put the border aside and focus on the supplemental, meaning Ukraine funding for other countries and other country securities, except for ours. This whilst, uh, criminal aliens rampage through the country, murdering young women, children, all sorts of heinous crimes that can barely even be described on a show like ours. Mitch McConnell says, put the border aside. Don't worry about it. Where's that photo of Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden hugging? Where is that? We got that? Sick. Also, Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden, the same people. Here's a clip from about a month and a half ago of Mitch McConnell trying to answer a question from the press and doing like pulling a Joe Biden. Actually, I, you know, dare I say, Joe Biden is actually somehow more sentient than Mitch McConnell. I've never seen Joe Biden behave this poorly. So the sick, these sick bastards that keep up uh, these old octogenarians in office like Mitch McConnell. I still got some tank of the gas. I never thought that I'd be here when I came here in my 40s. Yeah, you did. You could have probably passed term limits but you love DC. I'm going to drain the swamp. They get to the swamp and then they realize it's all, it's not, a, it's not a swamp. It's more like a hot tub. Look at these two guys. 
old, sick bastards. Mitch McConnell has given Joe Biden everything he wanted. Mitch McConnell is best friends with Joe Biden. Mitch McConnell was probably cut in on Joe Biden's corrupt deals. When was the last time you heard Mitch McConnell talk about Joe Biden's deals all across the world? Joe Biden's corrupt dealings. When was the last time Mitch McConnell uttered a word about the Biden crime family? When was the last time Mitch McConnell uttered any words? Here's Mitch McConnell literally like having a, a seizure on camera from a few months ago. What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. Uh, Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Penny. Okay. Somebody else have a question? Please speak up. I love the battle axe Karen. If you know anything about DC and politics, there's always some battle axe Karen in the district office whose job it is to uh, come and badger reporters and be some type of like absolute monster. And here's the Mitch McConnell's battle axe Karen blaming the reporters. Lady, your boss just spaced out and stared at the ceiling like Nathan Wade, but at least Nathan Wade was dreaming about Big Fanny. Just stared at the ceiling. What a what a sick lot we have running our country. I mean, truly. He just pulled a Nathan Wade. We should do a side-by-side -side with Nathan Wade and Mitch McConnell and see who stared at the ceiling longer. And here's Battle Axe Karen coming through. Uh, please, Ans, please ask your question. Please ask your question, speak up. It's your fault. Blaming it on the reporters. Ooh, man, it's so sick. We have this um, important clip. This is the one I want to play, Royce, uh, of Mitch McConnell doing the same thing. Obviously, obviously, um, people can have bad days. I have bad days, right? Parent, my kids are up all night. Sometimes I come in here and, man, I got, I got very little to give, right? And so people can have bad days, but this is now happening all the time. Uh, a few months before that clip I just played you, here's Mitch McConnell in the Senate doing the exact same thing in front of all the cameras of the world. Go. Bipartisan cooperation and a string of The man there is named John Barrasso, and you'll notice something about John Barrasso. John Barrasso is a doctor. He's a physician. When he goes up to Mitch McConnell, he checks for his pulse. Did you see that? Did you notice that in the clip? Maybe we can get a freeze frame and show it for, for show it to you. Something that we we we've watched that clip a number of times. The doctor comes over to check to see if Mitch McConnell is still alive. That's how old and decayed. Leave party out of it. Eighty year olds shouldn't be running the country. A couple of reasons here. Why? Well, one, you have to check their pulse. Two, um, they should be like in a retirement home or staring at the sunsets, feeding the birds, doing like the pleasantries of life because they've lived to 80. That's kind of like an accomplishment in and of itself. John Brasso actually checking. There's a better screenshot of this. But John Brasso, you can you can see he's doing he's doing something that doctors do. He's checking the guy's pulse. He's actually literally, he, you can tell it's really subtle, but he checks he checks his pulse. Go find a better screenshot of it. You can, you can see, though, that that's what he goes over and does. He's a doctor. The senators know. Senators call me. Senators call me. That's a better one. Senators call me, and they tell me all the time about Mitch McConnell. Spacing off in meetings, falling down, like in the Senate. The stuff they cover up for him. The reason why we shouldn't have octogenarians running the country 
is, I mean, pretty evident, obviously, from a physical standpoint, but more importantly, from a mental standpoint, you have different priorities. You start thinking about your legacy. You don't start thinking about like working class, like middle class people that are just trying to make it with families. You start thinking about your legacy. Your brain starts to decay. You start wanting to write a memoir. And if you have access, of course, to our currency and the printing presses for the nation, you start thinking about yourself. You can be sold lies that you are like FDR or like Ukraine is like, like is Europe during a Nazi invasion. When if you actually look at what's happening in Ukraine, you'll see that Ukraine is actually a hotbed for Nazism with the Azov Battalion and so forth. But anyway, Voldemort Zelensky literally saluting a Nazi in Canada. Remember that? But these people, they can be, they you can trick old people and give them delusions. There are all these little historians that buzz around uh, Joe Biden and whisper in his ear that he's the next FDR, that he's the next Lincoln. You could trick these people into delusion. They're like so concerned about their legacy because they know they're going to be gone soon. And that's the uh, final reason why you shouldn't have people this old. We must have term limits. We must have them. It's because these people, they don't give a damn about you or me. They won't ever have to live with the consequences of their policies. If you vote for a war, you should, or one of your sons, be forced to serve in the front lines. I truly believe that in my heart of hearts. You know where, you know how we'd never fight another war again? If that was the rule. If you vote for a war, and if you vote to fund a war, then you go to the front lines or your firstborn son. And if you have no firstborn son, then a member of your family that bears your last name goes to the front lines. That's how it should work. You should suffer the consequences of your actions. When they put in eight, there are age restrictions in Congress. America was built by young men, men in their 20s and 30s. There were age restrictions for how young you could be because there was immaturity involved. So I think the age restriction is 25 to be a member of Congress and 40 to be president. I'm almost sure that's the case. You see, when the, our Constitution was written and when those restrictions were put in, people weren't living into their 80s and 90s and 100s. Dianne Feinstein died in the Senate this year or in 2023. She was so old, she's in her 90s. She died in the Senate and there are there's footage of her, people, her staffers, literally voting for her. Her staffers like raising her arm. That's not the way any of this was intended. We must pass term limits. What happens is you get to a position where you are so blinded, you are so old, you're so decayed, and you're so corrupted by the system, you're so twisted, that you become a tool of that system, and they manipulate you, and they turn you against every American and every priority that like actually sent you to the office in the first place. And that's how you get cl clips like this. This is a clip I asked for about Ukraine, uh, Rolls Royce. Do we have that loaded? All right. If you need if you need reason to celebrate Mitch McConnell leaving office, I have it for you here in like a 10 second clip. Here we go. Here's Mitch McConnell telling you, the American people, as the leader of Republicans, what's the most important issue in America right now? Go. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think we all agree the most important thing going on in the world right now is the war in Ukraine. Really? Do you, let me know in the, um, let me know in the chats. Do you agree? We have the chats in front of us, like massive screen. I can always able to follow sort of what people are saying and thinking. Do you agree that the most important, we all agree that the most important thing in the world right now is Ukraine, says Mitch McConnell at a recent press conference when he can speak, when he could speak. One of the few press conferences where Mitch McConnell was able to speak again when he wasn't having a seizure on camera. Do you agree the most important thing for you is Ukraine as you sit there with the withering grocery bills, insurance bills, cost of living, cost of housing yourself, bills in this country, cost to get a mortgage? As you sit there and look at the price of gas, remember gas was like 99 cents, Trump era? When you look at the unemployment numbers, 
When you look at what's happening on our border, the crime, the criminality, the utter decay and collapse of American society, do you agree the most important thing is Ukraine? This is the end result of not having term limits. This is the end result of having these decayed old bastards sitting there until they die in the Senate, which is what happened with Feinstein. We don't wish ill on anyone. We wish retirement on these people. There's this clip of Dianne Feinstein. They all join the Senate together. These little, these little witches' kitchen, this little cabal. They all join the Senate together. And they all like literally use the Senate as a nursing home. Dianne Feinstein, there's this clip of her staff literally just voting for her. She's just sitting there like barely, like barely able to produce a pulse. And her staff just like straight up votes for her. It's insane. The, I mean, you're, it's a, it's such an insult to you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, luckily there are um, people that are standing against this. And there are people that are saying um, this all needs to change. One of those is a dear friend of the show. Uh, and one of the best senators there is, who is Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz held a uh, press conference when Mitch McConnell wanted to give more of your children's future to Ukraine um, to go fight a war that he's going to get rich off of uh, and w that will destroy uh, uh, our currency and potentially lead Americans to war, a war that he would never fight or his children would never fight. Mitch McConnell voting, of course, uh, to cement his legacy instead of doing something good for Americans because Mitch McConnell doesn't give an S about us, working class, middle class, people with young kids. He doesn't even remember, he, doesn't, he can't even speak. He doesn't even remember us. He doesn't remember us. None of the things he's doing is going to affect him. He, every single law, Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer, they're all the same, Nancy Pelosi, Klaus Schwab, George Soros is 93, Klaus Schwab is 85, Joe Biden's 82, Mitch McConnell's 83, Nancy Pelosi's 84, and Chuck Schumer is 79. And all of these people are passing laws that will never affect them. It's like playing with Monopoly money. That's evil. Evil. You should be forced to live with the consequences of your own actions. Fannie Willis, Hunter Biden, Mitch McConnell, it's all the same. The through line is that these people need to suffer the consequences of their own actions. And in a consequence-free vacuum, this is what you get. A country that's $34 trillion in debt. A country that can't prosecute Joe Biden for obvious crimes because the system's so corrupted against him. A country whose dollar is worth a penny of what it was 100 years ago. The dollar's buying power 100 years ago in the year 1900 was $1. It is now worth a penny based on that valuation. That's what they've done to us. That's what they've robbed from your children and grandchildren and my children. We have to have leadership. We have to have strength to rebuild it. It's wonderful to see a little bit of strength on display in the Senate. Ted Cruz is one of those guys who's often uh, showed strength in the Senate. Um, and we're big fans of him on this program. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Ted Cruz saying Mitch McConnell must resign. This happened two weeks ago. Maybe this is what led to it. Let's go. Is it time for Mitch McConnell to go? I think it is. Look, everyone here also supported a leadership challenge to Mitch McConnell in November. Uh, I think a Republican leader should actually lead this conference and should advance the priorities of Republicans. I can tell you what I said when we had that leadership election in November of 2022. It was right after a very disappointing election. 2022, the wind was at our back. It should have been a phenomenal Republican election year. Republicans should have won the Senate. We should have won a big majority in the House. Instead, we lost a seat in the Senate and we barely got a majority in the House. And, and I stood up and said, look, in any ordinary organization, when you f are faced with failure, if you're running a business and you lose $50 million, you don't just say, hey, everything's great, let's keep doing it. No, you sit down and say, what are we doing wrong? And at that meeting, I turned to Mitch McConnell then, and I said, look, we spent the last two years with a group, a handful of Republicans joining with Democrats to pass the Democrat agenda. And I said, maybe that's a good idea. I, I don't think it is, but someone could make the argument that's a good idea. We're going to try and get Ted Cruz on the show tomorrow. I'm talking with our producers right now. 
what an incredible moment. You are seeing things happening very quickly right now. And it's good. Is Mitch McConnell leaving because he knows that they're done? They've squeezed as much blood as they can out of this rock and that they're finished. Here's a photo from a couple months ago of Mitch McConnell looking very tortoise-like, I mean, very much like a turtle-human hybrid here. How do you even get a neck like that? How's that even possible? What is that neck? That neck is coming out of a shell. It's obvious that is a shell. There's Joe Biden. Look at Joe Biden shoving a finger in Mitch McConnell's chest. Look at that. Creepy old crypt keeper Joe Biden with his crypt keeper hair. Look at that hair. Can you zoom in on that hair? Look at that hair. Ugh. Mitch McConnell with his giant turtleneck. Look at that. That's not real. More machine than man now. Here's this, here's this unedited photo of Mitch McConnell uh, naked that we actually found. It's terrifying. I'm so sorry. A leaked photo. Mitch McConnell's OnlyFans content called Only Shells. And it's Mitch McConnell. Uh, Mitch McConnell taking a bathroom nude, a shower selfie here. We're very sorry we had to do this to you. We didn't mean to. Uh, we don't. We try as hard as we can not to show nudity or adult content on this program, but here we are. Only shells, ladies and gentlemen. Don't subscribe, please. Uh, we beg of you. Let's get some turtles in the chat, please. Um, turtles up. A turtles up for Mitch McConnell, who has sold out our nation, who has um, sold out this country, who we wish... Uh, to resign immediately. He says he's going to try and cling on for power. Um, maybe it's because Mitch McConnell. Here, okay, so there's Royce is going to put up some turtles. on the. It's, we'll put up some turtles here. Robbie, grab the turtles. Um, we'll put your turtles up on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're live. We didn't know that this would happen. Um, we do know the horrifying, uh, obvious results uh, of people like Mitch McConnell staying in office so long. Like, are you proud, Mitch? He's talking about how proud he is. Are you proud of the $34 trillion in debt? Are you proud of that? Like the IRS takes in like, like $4 trillion a year. So that means if the IRS spent $0 on anything else, it would take a decade to pay off our debt. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks so much for that. Such a great dude. Mitch McConnell regularly talking about how Ukraine is the most important thing in America. And based on reporting yesterday, is, is trying to arm twist and leverage more Ukraine funding from the one Republican that we have in Washington, D.C. trying to do something, Mike Johnson. Why is Mitch even staying in the Senate? People in Kentucky hate him. Is it for the free lunches, ladies and gentlemen? We actually have footage. Uh, we have footage of some of the free lunches that are provided in the Senate. This is... Um, from a reporter that we have in Washington, D.C. that's able to go undercover um, and show this. Here you go, yeah. Um, is this why Mitch is allowed to eat for free? Is this what he's trying to get here? We're not sure. We don't know. We don't know. Um, but we know those are the wrong incentives. It's not what our founders, it's not what our founders wanted. This is not what our founders wanted, ladies and gentlemen. We have the uh, clip and we'll keep putting up the turtles. If you keep sending them, we'll throw up some turtles. Throw up your turtles for uh, for Mitch the bitch. Here is um, Diane Feinstein. She's like a hundred years old. We've been talking about this clip. It's worth playing. We off we always try and like show right as much as we possibly can. Any evidence? Anything? Like we do our best. We like we're <laughs> we use we use pretty charged language on this program. But like it's best to just show you that like it's true. The stuff we talk about it's true. So here you go, Diane Feinstein literally being incapable of voting, having her staff like hold her up like a marionette. It's so sad what's happening right now. It has to end. It ha we won't survive. It has to end. Watch. Senator Feinstein. Um, you say aye. Pardon me? Aye. Yeah. Uh, to say I, I would like to support a yes vote on this. Um, it provides 823 billion. That's an increase of 26 billion for the Department of Defense. And the, it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just aye. Thank you. 
Just say I, says her staff, barking into her ear. Is this who you elected? Did you elect the staffer? The little Brown University intersectional feminist graduate with a degree in rural white rage? Did you, did you elect that person to like scream at Dianne Feinstein how to vote? Who's actually running this place? It's so depressing when you look at the um, way that these people cling to power instead of spending time with their families, instead of doing what's like right for them. It is actually a through line here. The, the team was able to make Nathan Wade versus Mitch McConnell staring at the uh, staring at the ceiling. We're not exactly sure which one. It's <laughs> a timer. <laughs> Oh man, it is good. <laughs> Look at them both. <laughs> oh, that's pretty fun. That's whoa, whoa, whoa. How long does it go? It's 20 seconds. Okay. All right. Oh, nope. All right. <laughs> Maybe Mitch McConnell was dreaming about Big Fanny too at that point. We're not sure. We'll have our intrepid team go and check. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, somebody who had Jerry is our meme maker on this program. Uh, Jerry has surfaced a Mitch McConnell meme that must be played in honor of Mitch McConnell. I mean, I think I, I've, I've said as much as I possibly can. I mean, I really, I speak from the heart. Um, this isn't against, like, this isn't against a party. This isn't against, like, a, even a political ideology. This is a moral issue. The people who allow the 80-year-olds, the octogenarians, the people who are clearly suffering from dementia and seizures, like, who allow them to, like, stay in office, you are an immoral, evil person. You hear me, Joe Biden? You hear me, Jill Biden, Alice Cooper, Elaine Chow? Do you hear me? You are immoral people that allow this. You are such gluttons for power. You'll just debase, you'll do anything. You'll ride the like microwave warmed over corpses of your loved ones, like into power. What a sick lot you are. I, I, I truly do believe you'll be judged for it. And that's not my job, okay? But I'm here to say, like, that is a that is an it is an immorality to do that to somebody that you apparent that you supposedly love. Okay. So while that is a dark truism, and we should and must have term limits in this country, and there should be age limits, like it should just be flatly like if you're 75, you can't serve anymore. You're done. You serve out your term, no leadership, you're done. You're not allowed to serve anymore. 75, go in and retire. You get retirement, right? That should just be the, the rule. That's the rule I'm gonna propose. Maybe 70, maybe 80, I don't know. Let's just pick 75. 75, you're finished. Don't care how smart you are, you just, you're done, you're not, allowed, you're not able to serve anymore, okay? Like maybe that should be like the new rule. So here we go. We might as well, if that's like, if, if, if we're able to like talk about how moral and dark this all is, we gotta like cap it off with something spicy, something fun. Um, and something that brings a little bit of lightness to it, because that's the kind of show that we have. We have a show that's like, whew, okay, we're going to walk away with a smile. So here's your silver lining to having someone like Mitch McConnell having seizures on camera, is you get great meme content out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, the fast, the quick, and the turtle. Go. <laughs> criminal amounts of fun on this program we have so much fun on this program oh my gosh that's a good one jerry i mean that's like that's primo that's primo content uh so anyway my team is telling me that trump is 77 guys trump wasn't trump was how old was trump in 2020 right like how old was trump in 2020 and what did mitch mcconnell do to ensure our election security amazing how you haven't heard a blip you haven't heard anything from mcconnell about election integrity and election security, okay? So yeah, 
Obviously, Trump gets a pass, right? Obviously, Trump gets a pass. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are excited about the future. Wasn't planning on having such great news today, but here we are. It's pretty special. Uh, the energy is on our side. The energy is just like plainly and obviously on our side. Um, from Fannie Willis, case collapsing. Remember, on Friday, they're going to be doing more trials in the Fannie Willis case. There's going to be more argument for disqualification on Friday. We will be live. We will be live then. Uh, yesterday, Donald Trump like absolutely clobbered Nikki Haley uh, and Joe Biden, shockingly, in Michigan. Here's our election update for you. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump beats Nikki Haley again. Michigan Republican primary ex-president carries on full steam ahead. Biden rematch in the final rivalry defiantly says the race. He stays in the race and insists uh, that Donald Trump cannot win. Nikki Haley is a liar. Nikki Haley is a Democrat. Um, and all you need to know here is that Donald Trump in this race got 150,000 more votes than Joe Biden. So what are you going to do this time? Speaking of election integrity, what are you going to do this time? What shenanigans are they going to pull? Keep your eye on the prize. I think, ladies and gentlemen, they're all deciding that Donald Trump's already won. I think that's what's absolutely happening here. I think they've decided that Donald Trump's that Donald Trump's going to win, and they cannot do, they cannot lie, cheat, and steal their way out of it. And so, you're gonna you're gonna have like a, a situation. You're gonna have yourself a situation where um, they are now going to use containment strategies. For Donald Trump, that Donald Trump's going to win, walking away on election night, and you're going to have containment strategies for the Trump administration, and I think that's what they're trying to do right now. That's why Mitch McConnell is piecing out. That's why Mitch McConnell is saying I'm done. If Mitch McConnell thought he'd get another like gravy train, four more years of Joe Biden, like signing every single like give, giving him and his family every single deal and being able to do all this corruption, like Mitch McConnell would stick around. But Mitch McConnell says I'm out. Now comes the big race, ladies and gentlemen. Now comes the big race. Okay, baby. Um, why don't we? Uh, why don't we do a salt that lib? Okay. There are two clips that I really wanted to get to. This is MSNBC clip U and clip T. Royce. I'm gonna play them back to back. This is salt that lib. Get your salt shakers out. We always use salt that lib on our show. We we never want to miss salting the libs. Okay. Libs must be salted. The salt that must fill our cups. And the salt uh, from the tears of the lib uh, so genuinely tasty. They taste like chocolate gumdrops. Um, and so we're going to salt the libs. This is MSNBC admitting that Fannie Willis's case, the big Fannie case, is over. That they're done. That they've lied under oath. And that they're going to be disqualified. So this is very, very special for us. We're going to play these clips back to back Rolls Royce. And we wish for you to have all of your salt ready and to throw your salt shakers up in the comment section. There's a lot of turtles in the comment section too. I don't know if turtles and salt get along. Um, we'll find out. Mitch McConnell, very rep reptilian, very slug-like. Uh, so try and separate the turtles and the salt. Uh, but let's salt these libs. MSNBC having a panic attack on air, admitting their case against Donald Trump is done. Get your salts out. Go. <laughs> When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021. Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. That testimony directly contradicts earlier testimony from one of Willis's former good friends who said the relationship began well before Wade testified it did and predated his hearing by the DA. Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Did you observe them do things 
that are uh, in common among people having a romantic relationship? Yes. Such as, can you give us an example? Hugging, kissing, just affection. All, of, all before November 1st of 2021, correct? Yes. It's it's so legalistic centric and yet so important and fascinating. Right. Don't let the legalese fool you. This is epic. This is monumental. If things are going in the direction we think uh, Fonnie Willis lied to the court, it's game over for her. She will be disqualified um, if they had a relationship prior to when they uh, represented to to the court. It's it's a huge deal. I, I can't overstate it. And do you feel the same way, Charles, based on the testimony of what we just heard and we just learned Nathan Wade, who is the special prosecutor in this case, walked in the courtroom. He is being sworn in to testify now about this issue and his relationship with Fonnie Willis. Let's listen. <laughs> the moments before disaster. Well, you know what? Here's our promise to you that we will be here for you. Um, we are an independent show. And so we are able to do things very independently. Like, for instance, um, here's a meme of Mitch McConnell literally curling up into his turtle shell. Uh, we wouldn't be able to play this if we had some type of, like, big-time corporate media uh, foot on our neck and strings attached to us. Um, we wouldn't be able to put up clips like this and talk about only shells, right? We wouldn't be able to do that. Um, we, we are able to do shows like this and just go an extra two hours because um of you and because you support us and so we say thank you we will all we are building a movement here like i'm here for you thank you for being here for us and like the record like the record viewership we're getting on the show we just want to build and create an excellent product for you ladies and gentlemen um mitch mcconnell going into his turtle shell there you go okay good well very quick very quick very quick on this program okay all right very quick here uh whoop, oh no <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> uh this from uh Drefensor, who is a uh, great great meme maker uh so ladies and gentlemen we are excited for the battles ahead we hope that you join us in our brigade the benny brigade is our members only exclusive club that you can find on our website at bennyjohnson.com uh click on the brigade link and if you join today you can support us uh in our work that we do here we are out and about. We are rocking and rolling. We are creating actual real narratives and real media. We, I mean, we really, like, we went to South Carolina and we just, we just, like, crushed it. Live events, like, tons of news cycles, Donald Trump sharing all of our content. If you support us, it allows us to remain independent. And so that we can do lives like this and deliver this information and deliver this news in a way that is funny and a way that, like, everyone can laugh and, like, hop into the comment section, like, roll and have a good time. We also know that Joe Biden's economy sucks. And so if you can't afford it, I know what it's like to be dead broke. So thank you for watching no matter what. Um, but if you wish to, if you wish to hop in and become a member today, uh, it'd be a blessing to us. And so we say thank you, uh, bettyjohnson.com. Uh, our verse of the day, always uplifting, ladies and gentlemen, the verse of the day is Psalms 34. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Does that describe the country right now? Have you cried out for help over the last couple of years? I certainly have. I can tell you this. I certainly have. Moving, I've, I've moved my family from one of these Marxist communist hell holes in Washington, D.C. I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. Like I, I had to move my family for on, on pain or fear of death. Actually, things had gotten so bad when they defunded the police in D.C. I mean, we literally lived inside of a kill zone. I had a little baby daughter. So I cried for help and God answered my cry and he will answer yours. So have faith in God. That's it. Have no faith in man. Have no faith in government. Zero faith. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. Have faith in God alone and servants of the Lord. As I humbly on this program, we humbly try to serve our God and do our very best as simple Christians. That's all we are. It's just simple Christians on the show. So find your faith and set it on the rock, not on the sand. Okay. None of these leaders, all these people, they, they prove how corrupt they are, how awful they are. Um, the best that we can do actually is kind of laugh at them, right? Like ridicule them, like joke about them, 
use them as a punchline. You know, Christ often in his teaching used the powerful people as like punchlines, as jokes, as like, a, a, you know, like, hey, you don't want to be like these Pharisees, guys. Like, you actually got to be better than these guys to get into the kingdom of heaven. He says that in the Beatitudes. I'm reading that right now. And so, you know, it's good to use your powerful as a punchline and to say that's not that's not um, that's not the model you should follow. Good to do that. It's healthy. In fact, pressure release valve. We do a lot of that on the show. We call them memes. And the meme for today was, oh, just so, pr so primo. Mwah. Tomorrow we're going to learn all about what Hunter Biden said on Capitol Hill. But I will leave you today with our meme of Hunter Biden singing to those inside of the congressional committee who are asking questions of him. This is what at least we think might be going on right now. Please enjoy. March forward with me. And our team here at The Benny Show, we are marching alongside you. We are fighting alongside you. See ya. Hunter Biden, the big natural gas tycoon. I hope you're not too tired from your last art show. I'd hate for you to paint yourself into a corner during this deposition. I heard you got a new job as a magician because you've been making all of your business dealings disappear. I wonder what else he got up his sleeve. I got a laptop. I got a GoPro. I got a Glock cause I say all low, low, low. I got a bag of crack and you can probably see. I also got a pee. I got a pee. I got a pee. Why is everyone laughing at me? So if you find a little pee on the floor after I leave, I think it probably belongs to me.